looking at it, you know, I realize it's like, you know, they want to divide and conquer us. We can't be conquered unless we're all divided. So part of their uh, strategy of the earth dwellers is to keep us divided and, you know, whether it economically, uh, uh, you know, men and women as well, um, mm -hmm. you know, political parties and, and all these different things to keep us divided so that they can keep control and to keep this matrix. But the matrix is being blown off right now. The lid's being blown off. The, the veil is very thin. They're losing control. And these people, when that frightens them, you know, I, I keep under, I want you to understand out there. They are motivated by fear. That's their biggest motivation besides, you know, lust and things like that. But fear is the big one. And, and they should be afraid. No, but you know what, Zef? The, the Go ahead, Pat. With, with motivation by, by fear is like it never works. At no. the end, you always lose. You know, right, and people but, are not real and people are not, are not who they're supposed to be. They just yeah. fake the whole time until something big happens and, and everything ex explodes, you know. What happens is when they get frightened, you know, then they start reacting. And when they have their, you know, toys like bombs and things, then you got to start, you know, you got to wise up and look out a little, you know, duck, you know, learn to duck. And, you know, you don't have to run at everything that's satanic out there just because it's satanic. You go run at it and bind it and throw it. And, you know, it's going to go its own way. But we have to kind of slip through this world, slipping in and out of situations God mm -hmm. makes for us. He'll make a way mm -hmm. for us to go in. Then he makes a way for us to get out. Slip away. But sometimes. don't just go in there if God didn't make a way for you. Because, you know, a lot of times, I think it was you, Govinda, that told Trish this, and I agree with you. You said, we do what we can, when we can. Exactly. And we I'll be all right back. i got to let the cat in. We can't do more than that. We, we do <laughs> what we can, when we can. Sometimes we're just having to be on hold. Um, oh, I know. I, I mean, I, I just went through about two and a half weeks of being on hold where yeah. I, I couldn't, I could barely move. Yeah, I know. I well, mean, as far as like putting, I mean, people were writing in and wondering, you know, where I am and what's going on. I, look, there was nothing to give. We, we, we put out what God gives us when he does, but I but, mean, we're But you notice, you notice that lifted like yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, um, yeah. And I mean, for we, me too. we've been getting, We've been getting hammered. I mean, on a, on a certain level, yeah, that happens. But then at the same time, God's purposes are being manifest in and through this as well. But, Zeph, the thing, too, with all of this is is that when we do engage, I mean, we're fierce. You know, when we do engage, we trump the entire deck yeah, well, um, because God gives us that power. Well, one of us can, can stop the... Uh you know, can stop something from happening. Like, okay, for example, Absolutely. if God puts you into the middle of a crowd, say at a boxing event or a concert or something, and, you know, and then all those demons start rolling around and you, one of us is there, it can't happen. It mm -hmm. stops. And so souls are sometimes saved because of that. And the enemy hates that, will persecute us and try to stop us from going to, you know, Satan's events upon the earth. Mm -hmm. Whether they're secretive or, you know, for example, like, in my opinion, most, say, rock concerts, especially the, the older, bigger bands, were just really, if you will, ceremonies for Satan. They were just kind of like, you know, like going to church, if you will. They, they were kind of like evangelical outreach. Right. They were having, you know, they would be, you know, they're the priests up there, the gatekeepers holding, keeping their little cryptic lyrics, thinking that you won't get them, but then trying to raise the demonic power raised the level of, of satanic power in the room at that time through their music and then hopefully take as many as they can, especially young people who are being, you know, gang stalked or, uh, you know, coerced by the group, peer pressure, that kind of thing, and hoping to clinch the deal of getting people to give up their souls. So, you know, this is going on everywhere all the time. And uh, but he hasn't, you know, Satan has not won. He hasn't gotten all the souls, and um, but one thing, one reason for that is because of the people I call the witnesses who are upon the earth. They can't get all the souls as so long as we're around. In a way, we're the protectors. Okay, we're the mm -hmm. protectors. Yeah. So as long as we're on the earth, they can't get their way. And notice what Revelation eleven. They would be wise 11 not to says, kill all the lambs. It it they are angry. Um, they are angry that they, that there are people that have supernatural power. Okay. Yeah, and, the uh, they're angry and upset 
And they celebrate when they think that all the people of God are off the earth. Okay? They actually celebrate. How foolish. But then what happens is God then reanimates or animates his own. And then they get all depressed again because, you see, what it's all about is that, you know, the, tr the kingdom of Satan is transferring to Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. and, and basically his people are not only animated, but t a time of death comes over the whole world. And then what makes them angry is then these people are judged. And they, but here's the thing that really upsets them. When the people of the Lord are rewarded... When the prophets and the saints and all who fear his name are rewarded in front of them, mm -hmm. they get so mad. In other words, let's take it on a smaller level. You, uh, they throw every whammy at the book at you to stop you from doing something they know you're going to do. Like they know you're going to do, you've announced that you're going to do something. So they throw all their forces to stopping you from being happy. But it goes through, it's a smashing success, and you are very happy. And that drives them insane. <laughs> Did anybody hey, there's else a, there's a that really uh, pretty intense marker along the uh, the road to uh, Revelations there. Yeah. One of Lately, everywhere I look, it's eleven. Like I look, it's eleven, 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 eleven. You know what I mean? It's like it's it's really strange. It's like there's an eleven thing going on. But anyway, we went into the Book of Revelation into uh, uh, you know the eleventh uh, chapter, and it just you know laid out like almost just mathematically um, kind of like the end of the world, like the end of all this, or how it's all going to wrap up. And I'd say to people, rejoice, because don't be afraid of, don't, don't fear the reaper. <laughs> you know, don't be afraid of death. If you, if you fear God, you have nothing to worry about. If you love Jesus, you uh, have noth yeah. nothing to worry about. Don't worry, because believe me, it's going to be great for you. You're going to be rewarded, okay? Believe yeah, me, you're gonna, I... you, you will be rewarded out there. You just have to, you know... It's going to look scary, but it's meant to scare the earth dwellers, not you. But there are earth dwellers, not everybody. Yeah, that was interesting, the way that earth dwellers yeah. and those who destroy yeah. the earth were the same uh, right. people. Uh, are you sure you're following all the rules? And then, and then when you talk to them confidently, you know, back and, you know, you understand what they're doing and what's going on, and you see the way it's working, uh, it, that also upsets them quite a bit. When they see that you're, you're confident, you understand, you go, okay, I know what's happening, bro. No problem. You know, it's all right. Uh, you got to do what you got to do. You know, <laughs> you know you're, a, you're a slave and uh, you're a, uh, you know, a pathetic, um, sort of unthinking, uh, uncompassionate, filled with uh, doubt and fear person walking around totally confused about what everything is. And so I'm going to try to help you. You know, I'm going to help you. I'm going to make it easy for you. Uh, you know, um, I'm going to go ahead and, you know, uh, get up off my hammock here. And I'm going to just walk down the beach to where it's legal for me to be. Unless you pass another law before I get there. <laughs> well, there's definitely an element of, of people looking for a weak target. You know, in all of these things. Yeah. And, sure. and whenever people see somebody that actually knows who they are, knows what they're about, and, uh, and you don't back down on it. They, you know, I, I've noticed right. a lot of people you know, with me, they, they just they walk away because yeah. they, don't, they realize they, they would rather, they'd rather mess somewhere else because they realize there's some repercussions on some level. Uh, yeah, th th that's the thing that's amazing to me. They don't quite understand the repercussions for doing evil deeds, that it comes back on them every time and even worse than the deed they did. Yeah, exactly. You, you would think that they would, you know, try to learn that. But again, when you tell them about it, they get confused. They, they have this idea in their, in their mind, which is weird, that they get away with it every time. Even though the history would tell them. Uh, yeah, they're in denial. Their own history would tell them it has never worked out that way. They're totally in denial. Then. So I don't, you know, I, it's, it's weird. Okay. I mean, there, there's nothing I can do about it. I, you know, I, I feel sorry for them that those people that keep repeating the same mistake over and over. And, you know, I tell them, you know, some t on, on the podcast anyway, I tell them don't pick on any of our people because if you do and God sees it, he's, you know, he could kill you. I, it's that, yeah, that's a, that's a public service announcement. I put that out every now and then too just for people's reference because the thing about it is that, you know, ultimately for, for me, 
I realized that these guys have this very short run around this track, which is a pretty miserable existence anyways. Yeah. And then they go on on a grease pole to hell. So it's, it's you know, if they don't want to cut that shorter than it already is. Well, again, Govinda, the, the Bible calls them, God's word on them, what God calls them are earth dwellers. And also they're the destroyers of the earth. So they really uh, don't have anything to do with the spirit. And they're referred to by other names, but all they know is, you know, negativity, destruction, stopping someone, blocking them, you know, putting red tape in front of them, you know, or sabotaging them. You know, that's all they know. They don't know anything mm -hmm. else, you know. And when you try to teach them something else, again, they get very confused. They don't understand, you know. And it's because God made them to be earth dwellers. That's why he can refer to them in, in his in the Bible as earth dwellers and it's because they are spiritually not there. They don't understand something like, you know, the golden rule that wouldn't, that does not occur to them. Hmm. It's only what they see. And it like, you know, you, you, they're not look in the end. They're just props. Anyway, they're just like sock puppets. They're not really real. They're there to facilitate God's plan and also to strengthen the saints to get the saints to grow beyond their fear beyond their limitation. And what they do is they help to strengthen us so eventually it doesn't bother you what they do, and that's, that's the goal of them, is to overcome them. That's when Jesus is talking about in, in the second chapter of Revelation, he talks about those who overcome will get that white stone. Those who overcome will get a new name. Those who overcome will be able to eat from the, uh, you know, the, the tree of eternity, you know, the tree of life. Uh, and... Uh, you know, all the rewards then go to those who overcome. And part of the reason they're there is so we can overcome them. That's their job. Is they're, oh, absolutely. Do they're doing their job, actually. Absolutely. So you can't feel I angry with them. You have to, you know, part of overcoming is not to be personally angry with them. Yeah, absolutely. And, because and, and, you know, and, and, it's, and it's realizing that it isn't personal. It's because we've been marked for light and for truth and for the kingdom and for an eternal inheritance. Oh. And they're not. Yeah. Right, and they get mad at that. And mm -hmm. you know, again, back to back to my touchstone today is Revelation, eleven. Yeah. Uh, it it says you, what what angers them is that um, what, what angers them is that the, the wrath of God is coming to the earth. Okay, it's going to be a time of the dead. All right, that the dead should be judged. You know, and they are they are the dead. Okay, they are the dead. It's the time of the dead that shall be judged. That's them. And that also what angers them is that there's a reward given to the servants, the prophets, and the saints, and all those who fear the name of God, small and great, um, are rewarded. And that drives them completely and almost to suicide. And one, one more thing that drives them nuts, Steph, too, is the fact that the realization that they've chosen it. They had to choose they will, it. Yeah. They, will, they will come to that at some point sooner or later, which is the realization that all of this has been their choice so even even when they wind up in eternal separation from god that was their choice and so i mean what we encourage them to do um even as they're stabbing us in the front with a smile on their face is look you don't have to choose to be like that there is another way yeah well that's the whole idea of martyrdom is to to show them through love and strength of god and the power of god even though we are being slain that our, you know just like stephen when he was stoned he taught, he, they were all very afraid when they saw Stephen's reaction. You know, they, they couldn't believe it. And it probably he converted about a thousand people that, you know, just from that, you know, not, not only then, but throughout the ages through the Bible, that story has probably converted many. Richard Wormbrand, you know, when they were torturing mm -hmm. him, his, his reaction to them converted many a guard to Christ. Because, yeah. you see, the thing is, he didn't have to defend anything. He'd already gotten, you know, he already was ready to receive his reward. He's already receiving his reward. He knew who he was. And so they, they couldn't shake him out of that through torturing him. And so then they become afraid, and some of them go right to their knees. And then that's a glorious day, we, and we love that. That's what it's all about. But we can't save our own lives because, l let me ask anyone out there a question. Let's say you had your own life, and... You could do whatever you wanted. What would you do? I mean, you know, because we're all kind of limited because, you know, they limit us as much as they can. But what would you do? What's the goal here? 
Yeah. I'd be lazy as hell. If there, were no <laughs> if there were no adversary out there, I would be totally lazy. Right, you wouldn't. Yeah, de- you wouldn't that's de- a good point. You wouldn't develop into yeah. the spiritual I warrior can. you are. We need. We need to be tested. We need to be. Uh, but I mean, tried. what what would be the goal if you could do anything you want? Okay, let's say you could be like arrange stuff with magicians. I've I've been around a few of them, and they're completely. They got power from the dark side, and yeah, there is power to get, but that power is temporary, and it's fading and it's dying. And in this day and age, now where we are going into the tremendous judgment, because everything that's happening and going to happen in the next few months is actually going to be accounted to God's side for judgment against, you know, uh, as vengeance against, you know, those who persecute his saints. And he's going to, you know, his children, he's going to avenge that. And that's what I believe you're seeing now. I'm, I don't think you're seeing them having all these victories. And even, you know, with all the tornadoes we've seen and the fires and all the, I think these are all warning shots across the bow right now that he's coming. Yeah, so that's my take on it. John, time for you to chime in, buddy. Okay, just uh, listening to what you said, uh, somewhere in the New Testament it talks about these people being uh, like brute beasts. Yes. Oh, yeah. we're seeing a lot of that now. Yeah. No, I'll tell you, it's a new perspective on there. Just opened my eyes up to it. That Yeah, without these people here, uh, one, God wants to give us a reward, but we have to earn it. And so the only way to earn it is to go and have these people out there... Um, who are in our way, in God's way, uh, right. persecuting us and stuff. Yeah, it does work out that way. But it un- ends up all working for good because, you know, everything that he has spoken to happen does happen, and we know how it ends, and we know he rewards his own. So, look, folks, just remember, love the Lord, fear the name of God, fear God, love the Lord, love Jesus, uh, be washed in his blood, be baptized by the Holy Spirit of fire now! Be baptized by that spirit of fire right now in the name of Jesus and live, and you will be rewarded. But, yes, there will be a little persecution, which is obviously, compared to everything else going on, it's incidental compared to the big picture. It's just part of our development. It's part of our character development. It's part of developing our souls, preparation for kingdom life, preparation to be his children. We need to go through this. And, you know, but anyway, uh, all right. Hey, Zeph, also, uh, I was looking in the Bible one time, and at the beginning of the New Testament, you know, had one of those little rhema things, and it talks about the New Testament of our Lord and Savior, and the word and came in, two separate things, yeah. our ruler, the one we obey, and our Savior, the one who saves us from the wrath to come. And, yeah, and the thing is, is the transfer is on. The whole um, book of Revelation is really telling us something else, that there's going to be a great transfer of all the nations and all the kingdoms upon the earth to God, to the Creator and Christ. It's all going that way. And, um, you know, they know it. They're upset about it. But there's nothing they can do about it. And so this is their final kind of death rattle, and they're going to be very dangerous and very evil and very awful. But try to keep your eye on the prize, people. I know that is a cliche. Do you all, do I get a big amen? Amen. The, the, amen. amen. Yeah, you amen. won't hear any, any disagreement <laughs> from our brothers here. You won't get any disagreement at all because it's, this is what is going on. This is the, you know, this is the, you know, as they say, the, the, you know, in boxing, this is the main event. And well, you know, Zeph, something, too, that people can do if, if you're struggling with this whole thing. David talked about teaching a man to number his days. And, you know, if, he, if somebody just sits down and says, okay, how much longer do you think this life is? Exactly. Calculate out how many days it is. I, I saw a post that uh, Brother Thomas did where he talked about just the number of hours yeah. that a person's life might, might be. Yeah. It's, it's not just, that long. It's kind not of that long. kind of adds up to 666. And, and, it, <laughs> and if, if that's for a 75-year life, yeah. And, and most of us have lived a chunk of that already. Yeah. So I'm it's already, just like you yeah. say, okay, how many hours do you think this thing will go on for? Um, it's not that much. So, you know, the people of God, to overcome, God's not asking us an impossible task. He's asking us just to trust Him to get into that place and to be about His purposes for that window that we still have. Here. All right, uh, Govinda, you've got the last word. Hey, guys, i got to let you all oh go. Oh, my gosh. God Is bless it you already? all. It's Thanks, time to... Pat. Thanks, Govinda. Hey, love you. Thanks, John. Thanks, John. Love you. Thanks, John. Okay, there they go. I really had to, um, you know, get out of there because we got to turn it around.